Hi, this is Dr. Mark Costco in Jackson, Mississippi. I'd like to share an inter interesting case of UGG syndrome, uveitis, glaucoma, hyphema syndrome, where a patient had had an IOL in the eye for uh, what she said was 40 plus years, and it was dislocated and malpositioned and giving her lots of issues. Uh, here we're marking two and a half millimeters back from the limbus, um, as well as some extra marks. This uh, sort of outlines where the haptic tunnel uh, will be on each side. Uh, we're making a paracentesis um, just superior to each of those marks and another paracentesis inferiorly filling the eye with viscote. Um, we'll place a 23 gauge trocar. Um, these particular trocars uh, are from um, Manny or Matty or something something that starts with an M. I like them a lot better. Um, but you can see that lens in there um, is just kind of dislocated. There's significant somerings material, so much so that it's actually shoved the IOL up against the back of the iris and there's like significant TIDs. Uh, and But I can tell that it's in the sulcus and so I'm just kind of dialing it out. Um, there is some adherence to some iris material there, but it, it still ultimately came out easily. Um, yeah, she said that um, in the late 1970s she had a state-of-the-art procedure um, and um, where they took her cataract out and um, placed uh, this lens. Uh, here I'm trying to cut it and you'll see, hmm, not cutting. I was thinking it would be acrylic, but I guess it's PMMA or something. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of inspect. I'm like, well, could I put it back in the sulcus and just position it better? But I'm looking and the somerings is so huge that I just know there's, there's not really going to be a good way. Um, and so I expand the wound and decide to take it out. Um, here I'm just kind of making the wound a little smaller. I edited that a little bit because uh, I'm sure nobody cares to watch me place sutures in the cornea. A uh, little extra viscote, and now what I'm doing is just kind of trying to see, okay, how, is there any adherence from that capsular summerings material to the iris, and ooh, wait, yes, there is. So tug a little bit, it's not coming, so give a little push of viscote, and kind of visco dissect it, and we, we free it up there. I'm going to go around on the other side. And, uh, and you can kind of see the transillumination uh, where the, that, um, those haptics had just really macerated this iris and she had at least a 0.9 cup and, and we discussed at length that, you know, I'm not sure how much her vision would improve. Um, uh, here we're placing a 23 gauge Lewicki anterior chamber maintainer. Uh, going to do some core vitrectomy here. Um, I've sped this up um, just because sitting there doing a bunch of vitrectomy is kind of boring to watch. Uh, obviously I'm an anterior segment surgeon, not a, a retina specialist, so you know I'm going to go about uh, vitrectomy slightly differently here, you know, mostly focusing anteriorly. I, I do not vitrectomize past where I can visualize. Now what I'm going to do is start this kind of long, tedious process of trying to get all of this summerings material out. And you know, again, I said I'm, I'm, I'm not a retina specialist, so I don't have a posterior viewing system, uh, or at least I've not, I guess we do have one in, in the room that retina operates out of. Uh, but I, I I know that I, I need to try really hard not to drop any of this stuff because it's just uh, going to be um, an extra surgery if we drop some of this stuff. So I'm, I'm being real careful not to drop it. I've got um, MST forceps uh, in my left hand and I've got the vitrector in my right. I'm just trying to make sure that we're not yanking on any vitreous 
Um, it's just the zonules are really strong here. The, the other video that I've posted similar to this, my, my original uh, video, was a case of pseudo exfoliation. So those zonules were like non existent. Here, the zonules were actually pretty robust, and that's part of what made this difficult. But I'm kind of using a combination of um, pulling on it as well as kind of visco elevating it. Um, and I, I know if I can just kind of get it onto the shelf of that iris there, I'll, I'll be okay um, to kind of slowly um, tease it out, burping the wound, gently, real careful to watch for vitreous. Uh, I've already done a lot of vitrectomy though. Um, you can see I, I placed a Malugan ring earlier. Uh, people talk about worrying that the Malugan ring is going to fall or something. I just, I just um, don't think that's a, a huge issue, at least not for me. Um, so uh, again, I'm just trying to really, <laughs> I've been really careful not to drop this stuff. So like I'm, you know, in position zero on the foot pedal because I, I don't want my infusion to push it backward. So now I'm just going to kind of slowly visco um, push it, if you will. Or, um, and then I try to grab it and you see it's just that that lens material, there was no capsule around that piece anymore, so there's nothing really to grab to. Um, using the iris shelf there to kind of put some viscoid. If you just go in and squirt viscoid right in the middle, well, it'll fall straight into the vitreous cavity. But if you start on the edge of the iris, it'll it'll fill the anterior chain. It'll, it'll fill what you want it to fill. Um, so basically, anytime I burp lens material out, I I put a little more visco in and I do a little more vitrectomy. Just want to make sure that I'm not yanking on vitreous, you know, that's, you know, come out of the wound and I just haven't seen it or something. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of slowly tease this stuff off without dropping it. Um, put it in the anterior chamber on the iris shelf and then kind of slowly tease it burp it out little by little it slowly comes I thought about editing all of that stuff out uh, and just kind of showing the Yamani but I think it's good to see this stuff because you do need to deal with it um, more visco again starting in the angle and using the iris as a shelf uh, so here I've got that's what a googling hook or something I'm just trying to and so I've hooked capsule and I pulled some capsule out there and still visco dissecting I promise it was not vitreous <laughs> it was capsule uh, and um, but again just you know we have burp stuff out and that's you know potentially a dangerous maneuver uh, to you know if vitreous came and put traction on the retina so I always immediately go back in and and do more vitrectomy and here I can tell there's just a little bit of capsular remnant there I'm just going for I'm trying to keep it very I just want a clean eye I want to get all that stuff out of there I don't want to drop anything and then we can start over and give this lady a new lens and a, and a good position um, so we're we're good we're, we're just kind of checking actually using the the um, um, kuglin hook to push the Malugan ring. Uh, here what I'm doing is injecting some um, washed triamcinolone um, that we've we've made preservative free. You can certainly email me and I'll tell you how I make that. It's vastly cheaper than um, triessence um, and equally is preservative free in my opinion. Off-label um, but that stains for vitreous, and, and there isn't any, but I, I'm just paranoid. I'm like, ah, could there be some underneath this wound here? So I'm just kind of tediously going at that wound with my vitrector. I just want to make sure that anything that came out, I sever with the vitrector. 
We don't want any vitreous in the interchamber. Don't want any vitreous coming out of the wound. Don't, just don't want any traction on any vitreous anywhere. Um, and that, that's super important. The other thing that's super important is to make sure you always do this right here. Always go back and put more viscote. Um, I probably used three tubes of viscote in this case, and, and it's just necessary. You, you don't want it to go to all this trouble, and then she needs a DMAC. Um, so uh, this is Brian Kim's trailing haptic first technique where I am externalizing this haptic, and, and watch. I'm so focused on telling my assistant how to rotate the handle that I forget to pronate my wrist. <laughs> Um, I, I mostly do one piece lenses and you know typical cataract surgery and so I don't do a ton of these three pieces so here I forget to pronate my wrist and you'll see that the IOL is going to unfold uh, it's going to try to go upside down I'm going to try to grab it ah no don't don't no oh no <laughs> uh, so now we have an upside down IOL which is not that big of a deal we've got plenty of space in the eye more visco my left hand, I think, is a cyclodialysis spatula above the eye well, and my right hand is pushing with a viscoat cannula, and we just flip it. It's, it's ultimately not that big of a deal. Uh, you, you just you want to be careful not to rub the cornea as you are doing those maneuvers, so you have to have a second instrument to press, press um, on both sides of it. You see that little tiny ink mark on the, the needle um, to show me where two millimeters is so I know how far to tunnel. But it, of course, as soon as it touches water, it wicks away. Um, these are 30 gauge ultra thin walled TSK needles. In the US, they're sold from like Delasco or something. Uh, this is a ZA9003 from Johnson & Johnson slash AMO. Uh, I refer to it as a, quote, regular three-piece. It's not the Zeiss CT Lucia. I do uh, recommend the CT Lucia, or Lucia. I, I don't even know how to say it. CT Lucia, Lucia. Um, I've tried so hard to get those lenses and they're just on chronic back order and I've gotten to where with enough practice I can I can do it with these brittle PMMA haptics and it and it works fine but it is it's very challenging to do this I, I really would encourage you if at all possible to get the Zeiss lenses so I'm taking the syringe off the needle and going to let it um, uh, fall back into the vitreous space a little more viscote um, these haptics are just really unforgiving. They bend, they kink, they break. You, you've got to be super careful. Uh, but you can buy artificial eyes uh, from Golden Ophthalmics called Simulize that are made for practicing the technique. And if you if you do it enough, you can you can get to a point where you can you can do these haptics, and they. They definitely fit in the lumen of these 30 gauge needles if you if you have enough practice. Uh, again, this is a ZA9003 from Johnson & Johnson and that haptic is going in the lumen of the 30 gauge ultra thin walled TSK needle um, uh, just fine. It may not go quite as uh, easily as a a Zeiss uh, CT Lucia lens, but it, it, it fits fine. And if you if you practice it on the simulize enough, you, you I believe this technique can be done um, with this lens. Uh, so here I'm externalizing, um, and I'm going to cauterize with a low temp cautery to give a small bulb there. Here, what I'm doing is slowly externalizing this one and you can see in the eye on the right of that lens there's a little bit of there's a little much torque on that optic haptic junction and it's it's gonna it's gonna make me ultimately be just a hair decentered um 
and I don't know if that happened, you know, when the lens was upside down and I flipped it, but there's, there's just, uh, you can see there's evidence there where there's been a little bit of um, stress on that optic haptic junction. And so it's, the haptic is flared out a little bit, which is making the IOL sit a little lower or, or higher on, in the screen, but lower on the patient. I'm sitting superiorly here. Here I'm not, uh, removing the Malugan ring. And, and um, I ultimately think that is a very adequately centered lens. I was not about to redo it for that. Uh, but um, I sutured the rest of the wound since we had had to expand it uh, to remove the original IOL. Um, you may have noticed the patient already had a pre-existing uh, PI. Uh, no, no evidence of a TRAB, though, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that was from. I suppose years ago when they put the lens in the sulcus, maybe they were prophylactically making PIs. Here I think I'm going to do some uh, myostat. I'm going to kind of sweep it over the iris on both sides. Um, and that's going to give us a little bit of uh, pupillary constriction. More uh, vitrectomy here for good measure. And I've seen this patient back post-op day one. She had a clear cornea. Uh, her vision had gone from, I don't know, something like count fingers to 2100 uncorrected. Uh, but she's got a really severely glaucomatous nerve. So um, I think that actually she, she'll ultimately refract pretty good. Uh, so we're hydrating where the maintainer was there. And I just I just can tell it's, it's leaking too much. So I put a stitch in it. Um, Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little dry vitrectomy because when I come out with the trocar, I want that to be kind of soft because I don't want any residual vitreous to try to egress out of my trocar site when I remove the trocar. Um, and it, I can just see that the sclera in that area was just gaping a little bit. So I, I, I didn't see any vitreous, but it was just kind of gaping and I just felt more comfortable putting a stitch in it and it's not it's not leaking and yes and, and of course no vitreous yanked from the uh, wax cell which would not have been good to uh, do that. This is uh, moxifloxacin from Imprimis um, and I really think she's gonna do great I mean other than the existing glaucoma which which hopefully will, will be okay and controlled with drops. Thanks for watching.